So uh, give me a little bit of an apparent history of the uh, seeking of Jonathan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> It's good to be in front of you, man. I really, I appreciate oh. you very much. Oh, yeah. thank you. Have you been um, watching my videos? Yeah, yeah. Why don't I? Yeah, I'll start with the with the recent, <laughs> and then I'll go back. But uh, sure. Yeah, I. Uh, you know, I've just seen you, man, for for about a week. I want to say a week. Oh wow! And um. And um. And, um, <clears throat> and so, um, and, and so I listened, you know, it was one of those things where I've been, I've come back into non-duality after a long journey. I'm, I'm 45, but, I, and I'll get into that because I'd, I'd love to share some of my story. Sure. Just to hear you, you be able to kind of, you know, do your yeah. thing. Um, and so, um. Yeah, so 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 I so I came back in. I think I was listening to uh, Jim Newman or or Tony Parsons or something. And then you're you know it's suggestions, right? And I see this this young Asian kid with glasses that I had on, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, what? But that's me. I I love mm, you know what I mean. Who you don't expect as the guru. I yeah, mean, now yeah. I do. Now I do. I'll tell you yeah. my story. But now I do. So I was like, let me let me listen to this guy. You know. I got this, I got this, let me listen to this. And I was going for a walk and I put it on and you, and, and it was one, I don't know how long ago it was, but you're talking about how, what's going on or one interpretation of what's going on here is uh, this addiction, addiction mm. to the dream, addiction to the story, addiction to the me, addiction, addiction. Mm, yeah. Well, addiction has become a big part of my life over the last couple of years. And, um, and so it just really spoke to me and I felt like I just felt moved by it. Then I went on and, and then I listened, then I listened to more, you know how it goes. And it's like, let me listen yeah, more. Yeah. And then I listened to you. Um, I've listened to you several times, but I listened to you, uh, in an interview with Tony Parsons and, yeah. and I heard you share a little bit of your story and this was only like a day or two after I was like, I, I have to, I, I have to know, I have to, you know, I, so then I, um, so, and then I saw this one-on-one -on -one thing. I had never even seen a one-on-one -on -one till yesterday. I decided to watch a one-on-one -on -one just to get a sense of what goes on. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and so I was like, okay. So anyway, it just happened. So bang, bang, bang. And uh, yeah. So, so I'd love to share a little bit of my story. So, so you yeah, kind of know. Please go ahead. Yeah. I mean, I want to listen to you, but like, but I just, oh, no, so you kind of have ahead. an yeah. idea. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so um, so so I grew up I grew up um, back in D.C. in Washington D.C. Mm. Uh, area area outside um, a Jewish family. My parents are very uh, go go, you know, yeah. successful that kind of thing. My dad like a merger acquisition attorney in, in D.C. like power, you know, but very controlling, and really the only way. Um, the only way I ever saw them enjoying life or enjoying the moment was drinking. You know, okay. they, they would come yeah. home from work and then they they, they would they would yeah. drink. And so it was just not a very nurturing environment. And yet my parents were always there for me, always supported, blah, blah, blah. But it wasn't yeah. nurturing, loving, emotional, right? So when I was 14, and this was the start of my seeking, when I was 14, my best childhood friend, committed suicide with oh, his father's man. gun yeah and and uh and and i was like and his father was an alcoholic uh but he was he was bad but he was abusive right so but it broke my heart but it also threw me into this well what what is going on here what is this all about yeah. what what are we doing he was here now he's gone you know so boom the seeking started i didn't realize it. i didn't call it seeking but yeah. i but i feel like that's yeah. when the wheels started turning so then i want to fast forward um <laughs> so, but so then i started getting it so okay so i and i was like a high octane kid too so i was president of student body captain of the basketball team made bas made varsity yeah as, as a young you know that kind of guy right homecoming court like I, I just that was and i saw my parents not happy 
you know, and they had yeah. money. And I saw myself not happy, you know, with, with, a, with a girlfriend and all this and popular and this. And I'm like, I'm still miserable. I went through this kind of depression while it was still and I was doing drugs and drinking, partying. Yeah. I loved partying in high school. Uh, and I was doing psychedelics, but then I got as a junior, I started actually seeking. So, but Ram Das, be here now, yeah, um, all that kind of stuff. Because I'm and I'm nineties, you know, I'm from the nineties. So, I mean, not that he was much earlier, but that that's what I got into. Yeah, and then I had an experience at the uh, at, at at the end of of high school. I was very depressed. I was really having problems. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking I need to go to India to find my, well, no, actually. So I had, I had an experience. It was, it was beach week. We we're all partying. It was all oh, the greatest. Yeah. And it was the greatest till the last night I slept with this girl. I really didn't want to slept with. And I felt shame and guilt. And I had an eighth of mushrooms and I ate the mushrooms and I walked off. Uh, and boom. I had done, I yeah, had done, yeah. I had done psychedelics before. N n nothing. It was fear. It was fear. Mm. I did it this time. It was <laughs> everything I had read about. I thought was being experienced. There was no yeah. separation. It was all bliss. It was all beautiful yeah. until I came back down. But when I came back down, I was like, that's it. I'm done with alcohol. I'm done with weed. I'm done with drugs. I'm done with women. And yeah. I said, I got to find my girl to <laughs> go to India. Well, I was too scared. I was too, too much of a pussy <laughs> to go to India. So I went to college in, at, at Emory down in Atlanta, which is what I was supposed to do, the good Jonathan. But I found an Indian guru who had a student down there. Boom, I get into this. Oh, wow. I, I, it really, and it resonates with me. So I become a monk. And um, in this, you know, I take the vows, right? So no sex, no drinking, no. Yeah. And I yeah. had yeah. felt out of control with that stuff. My sexual yeah. felt out of control. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Drinking, dr yeah, all that stuff. I felt out of control. So this was great, wow. right? It kind of locks me down. Well, my parents didn't like it. I'll try to fast forward, but we have an hour. No, 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 right? keep on going. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, cool. Okay. Um, so, but my parents, you know, they weren't too happy and they were scared, right? Because they're like, what's this thing? And the guru, I don't know if you know him, Sri Chin Moy, he's passed away, but he's an Indian typical guru with the with the dhoti and mm. playing the S yeah. Raj and the, the whole yeah. India, India, India. Yes, and he lives in New thing. York. Oh, oh yeah. okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 Disciples and we wore white and the women wore saris and the whole the whole deal, right? And wow. I loved it. And I loved it. And my heart was opening and I didn't know anything about non duality. It was the character yeah. chasing, you know, you know, the, yeah. the dream. But um but it felt like liberation from this little closed family where it's about money and it's about, you know, doing what's right. You know, it was like, uh, it was just a break away from yeah. that family system. A and the yeah, so you get the picture. So yeah. then I'm doing that. So then, and then my parents are like, no, we're not having this. So they hired these deprogrammers, which are like, this dude worked oh, for wow. the FBI against the David Koresh people. And then there was another cult, former cult, you know, because they're afraid for me. Yeah. So they locked me in my house after my sophomore year of college. I was home. And I was like, and it, it actually traumatized, you know, me. Um, but they locked me in the house and they were like, you've been brainwashed. But yeah. here I was having this heart breaking open and discovering a whole new universe of yeah, spirituality. Yeah. You know, it's all, I mean, now it's yeah. different, right? But I was eight, I was 20 and I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. Enlightenment and all the promises of the spiritual world, yeah. <laughs> you know, all that stuff, yeah, right? Yeah. So I'm like, so, but then I'm faced with my parents <laughs> going, no, give up what you want you know, give up what you're feeling and stay with the family, which is always the family dynamic in my house. And I said, I'm out. And I, and I ran away essentially. And the group and the guru helped me. Oh, wow. I ran away. Now that, that <laughs> took me deeper into the group. So it was like, I was full on, right? Yeah. yeah. So I'm like living in a, you know, I'm working in, in the restaurant, the vegetarian restaurants that we have, yeah, of course. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm full on, you know, I become a close disciple and I'm become a, a guard, which is like a close attendant for males of his. And he has 7,000 students all around the world. So it's great. And I get oh, to wow. go on these. And as it extends, I get to go on these spiritual retreats in Bali and Thailand for three months in the, in the winter. So I think, so there's, so there's this split. Part of me is like, man, this is great. Right. And then part of me, lives in seattle for 
two thirds of the year and I'm working in this restaurant and I'm angry and I'm basically like a, a resentful, almost like a dry drunk. You know what I mean? Where I'm just, yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm living off my meditation fumes, but, and I'm super devoted. Like I'm meditate. I mean, I'm waking yeah, up at yeah. three in the morning and I'm, I'm full on into that. But it's only giving me so much because the me is so strong. I mean, I'm fucking, yeah, I'm, all, right. I'm all there seeking, you know what I mean? I'm yeah, gonna yeah. Get this thing. <laughs> so, and the guru promoted that too, right? Like, if you do yeah. enough, you're gonna get it. So, fast forward in 2007, he, after about 13 years, yeah, he passes away. And I think, you know, I'm gonna do this for the rest of my life. I'm kind of a, not a leader, but, uh, you know, in this group, yeah. and blah, blah, blah. And I'm going to carry the banner for my guru and, and enlightenment, blah, blah, blah. And then I, I start getting depressed. And I'm oh, like, what, yeah. what am I doing? You know, what am I yeah. doing? And I'm reading Ramana, <laughs> like more, more non-dual teachers where I'm like, I know this is the truth. I know, you know. And so why am I still doing this? So I just outgrew it, right? The medicine's good yeah. until it's, it, it works until it doesn't work or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So I left, but in leaving... It was at that up to that point, it was like, uh, you know, I had left my parents and everything they believe that foundation of what the world is to enter into this to put on the spiritual hat, spiritual hat. Right. Mm. And now I'm like being forced, quote unquote, to leave this spiritual life and the guru and the monk and the highest noblest effort to get, you know, uh, yeah, to become what? to be yeah. just an ordinary Joe now in the world. But I was, so the yeah. spiritual pride was smacked me in the face. Right. And I'm, Oh my God. But it's also a lot of fear because the group was all I knew and there was trauma related. Yeah. To, so now I'm in the world. Oh, and I had missed my twenties. I had missed, you know what I mean? I didn't go, I dropped out of college. I did this whole group. I didn't know oh, anybody wow. outside of the group. Now you want me to get a job. And da, 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 right. My parents though, the ones who tried to stop me from leaving the group, I had reconnected. They were the ones who helped me to leave the group, but they were like, we don't, we don't even want you. We're just happy you're back in our life. So at 11 years, yeah. I didn't speak to my parents. Anyway, wow. I'll, 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 but, so, but then, so then I met my wife just as I was leaving. I met my wife and that was kind of the yeah. uh, part of the, and she's wonderful. Um, she's, spiritual i mean she's a psychotherapist she went to naropa which is a buddhist based yeah phd program you know so anyway so then i got into i said what do you do for spirituality she talked about recovery she talked about alanon for people who grew oh, up wow. with uh who were affected by alcoholics right yeah yeah i said okay let me do this i'm like oh we should be meditating you know this is silly everybody's talking about their issues da, yeah. da, da, da. and then i was like Couple, uh, two meetings in, I'm like, oh, shit, I grew up with alcoholics. So this was a journey. But mm. but at that point, after leaving the group, I became so, because I had been so one pointed with this one teacher, this one philosophy, so into non-duality. I became addicted with non-duality. Oh, wow. I would fly. Yeah, I would. I was listening. To, you know, Sailor Bob at all? Bob Adams? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got really into him and his lineage and John Wheeler is down. I don't know. I had all So you would go to books. Australia. You would fly to Australia. I to didn't go it. to Australia, but I met with some of his students here uh, yeah. in America. Okay. And I just got really into non-duality and then Paul Hederman. I mean, all these guys, right? I was into yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But, but there was still <clears throat> basically what happened for me is, and then, and then something changed where I had never been interested in money at all. And yeah. as a monk, I made $120 a week didn't care right but yeah. then all of a sudden something in me was like if i'm going to be in the world then i'm going to try to make money and i got all yeah. into money so and, yeah and then slowly i started drinking and smoking weed and still pretending to be into non-duality but it was me justifying my behavior using non-dual concepts i mean i, I was going to non-duality <laughs> like crazy and, and you know what i'm saying like well i'm no yeah. one so i can i can drink and I can enjoy myself and make money and I can masturbate to porn all I want and I can do whatever I want because I, there's nobody here. So that, and then finally I had to face the facts like, bro, you're out, you're, you, I, I hit a bottom. Just as COVID came, I hit a bottom. And I said, yeah. that's it, man, I'm done. So I just pulled back from non-duality because I was just, it was all fake. That's like the story of my life. It's like fake, 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 fake. Yeah, 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 yeah. Totally. But I still got something from all that, you know? Yeah. But so anyway, so 
so Emerson, <laughs> so, so um, I still got a lot from all that, but I'm just trying to be re real. No, no, with keep you it going, keep it going. It's okay. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah. 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 So, and then, and then my wife and I actually did the Course in Miracles during that time. And then what happened is after I finished the Course in Miracles, after I had some time of sobriety from alcohol and drugs, all of a sudden in the last like four or five months, non-duality started coming back. But what happened was I went back to some of the same people I was listening to before, yeah. where I feel like the clarity was like almost there, but really not is what I'm seeing yeah. now. Yeah, and 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 that and that's what's shifted in the last week or two since coming to 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 you and Tony and and this kind of uh, thing yeah. where it's like, and I I was listening to Tony. This was probably two weeks ago. I was listening, and he said, you know, he said to somebody, he said, all there is is what's happening, or he said, what is happening is all there is, and then that just started drilling yeah. down in me. Yeah. And I couldn't get away from it, kind of. You know, I mean, it wasn't always there, but when it would be there, there was something happening, so to speak. Yeah. And uh, so, all right, here I am with you, man. Now, that's the dream. Here you <laughs> go. Now, that was this, this character here. And so now, you know, I just... And so and let me just tell you this about you. So then I, would, I was listening to you the other night in my room where I used to pretend I was spiritual because I would be listening to satsangs but I would secretly smoke weed before I listened to the satsang. I would masturbate before. I, then I would listen to the satsang, right? But so, but I'm now I don't do any of that. I don't do any of that. I yeah. just listen to you, and I hear this thing, and I go, and I'm just melting, and I'm I'm like I'm I feel like I'm listening to Emerson's voice, and it's like a lullaby that's singing me to sleep. But the sleep is like <laughs> the disappearance of the universe. You know what I'm saying? The sleep, yeah. But, th but then there was the reaction uh, two days later, I got this headache and I was like, I'm, I can't listen to non-duality anymore. You know, yeah, so there's, yeah, still, yeah, yeah. there's still something anyway settling. So please, enough of me, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, all, that, all that there is is this and there's nothing outside of this. And everything that you told me didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but these stories, you know, saying is it's what we cling on to to make reality real. But there's no such thing as reality because reality is just a concept. It's just an idea. Everything is that we talk about is a concept or an idea. To go go back into stories, I had something very similar to yours. I was seeking. I became a teacher. I'm 50 years old, so I'm similar to your age. Uh, uh, you look so young. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> So I ended up doing the whole, you know, psychedelics and my parents were great parents, but kind of like yours, you know, like my dad was just, he hung out with the senators. He was chief accountant in a Senate and um, just partied with them. And I just played the piano, that kind of thing. So there was seeking kind of like, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and fast forward to the end days of my seeking is I thought I got enlightened about 12 14 years ago, I can't remember the timeline. And I became a teacher, I started offering all of this stuff, you know, to people. And, and um, so everyone else, you know, that, that speaks about enlightenment is, um, let's just put it in a blunt way, in this apparent experience anyway, was nonsense. Because I got there and then I was teaching consciousness, I was teaching awareness, I was teaching, you know, find your seat of consciousness, that kind of thing and practices, pointers, none of that really worked for this character here. And I'm a bit of a hardcore character. I'm kind of like you. Um, I went, you know, into my three o'clock in the morning cold shower, did Kundalini, Course of Miracles, Nisargadatta, all that kind of stuff, mantra. Yeah. And then I started teaching it. Um, and I was ultra vegan. I only ate fruit that fell off a tree. I was becoming a vegetarian. And, uh, but when the crisis came with, you know, a 10 year relationship ending. And then my mom had four brain surgeries. I was mm. thinking, should I, I'm like, I've been meditating for three hours, but I really just want to go to a bar and drink with my friends and, and, you know, do some debauchery or whatever, right. Do that kind of stuff. And I was <laughs> listening to Tony Parsons and I went into that, you know, so I destroyed the, 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 the highly esteemed teacher looked up, you know, because people thought I was a saint, you know, because I was like giving away, I, I got into some money, you know, in my late 20s, and then I gave it all away.
to become kind of like a monk, you know, kind of like what you did. And um, what what scene was, you know, when I kept on encountering this communication of Tony Parsons and Jim Newman, is that everything that I did didn't matter. And I was really holding on to that. I'm like, well, at least I have 25 years of spiritual currency. I should be a billionaire right now in spiritual terms because I've helped <laughs> thousands of people. It's in my write-up. Emerson has helped thousands of at-risk youth and all that kind of stuff. So I didn't want to let go of that. And I've had many glimpses along the way and all of this stuff. And so when it finally um, occurred to me that I've been bullshitting to myself all this time, everything that I've been holding on to is just a fantasy. It's an illusion. First thing that I can like did was um, cross-reference, you know, what Tony was talking about into quantum mechanics. And it was hitting it. Like this is 99.99% empty space talking to each other. There's no time here. Um, somehow this sound is traveling through time. There's a you, there's a subject object. And then there's just all silence. There's no sound really. Somehow there's voice appearing. Um, so all that there is is this, and there's nothing outside of this. And in this, there's an illusion of us interacting together. But since time is an illusion, this is not happening. Meaning that this is already free. Meaning that this is already done. Meaning that you're already dead. <laughs> Your speaking has ended. And whatever seems to happen is just this imaginary, illusory, fantastical reality that appears absolutely real because it's the perfect illusion of reality. This version of reality has time, has seeking and all that kind of stuff, but none of this is really happening. Um, with that being said, although there's no one here, life is just happening by itself. There's no one driving. There's no one meditating here. Um, I used to have substance abuses too. Like you name it, I, I did it. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm this extreme character, right? So seemingly, we want the eye, man. Like that was, you oh. know, what, what, I didn't, but like after all these years of being a monk and I never drank or anything, I, I snuck out to a bar and I drank and I was like, oh my God, this is the nectar of the gods. Why, why was I meditating all that time? Yeah, 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 and yeah. Like, that's, that's what happened it too. Was I was like, <laughs> it was because here I was like, you know, seven years into me being, you know, not drinking and, you know. I was eating chicken wings and shooting kind of like, you know, a whole bunch of like shots and everything. I'm like, and, 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 and then all of a sudden, you know what? I did that. I just did that. And then I destroyed my career as a spiritual teacher. I got canceled <laughs> because when you're partying and I purposely did it, you know what I'm saying? I thought I had a choice. So when, when, when I saw that, I basically told everybody that, you know, everything that I've thought you in the past is a sham. I'm a fraud. And people were like, oh, he's so honest. I'm like, no, 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 please destroy me as a teacher. Crucify me, right? And, um, and they did. They did eventually. I would buy a pack of smokes. And, you know, after a lecture, I would light up a cigarette while I was lecturing. <laughs> yeah. well, like it, it just got, oh, yeah. Really, yeah. really crazy at the end, and I would, I would end up kind of like sneaking in, kind of like a, a shot. And people are like, "What are you doing?" And then my mentor finally said, "You need to stop this." Mm -hmm. I said, "Well, people are still looking up to me, and I don't want that anymore because there's no one here." So, mm -hmm. and they're like, "Well, that's just a belief, Emerson, that there's no one here. You're listening to radical non-duality." Goes, you know what? He goes, "You should, you should take some time off." So I was, I just kept on hitting rock bottom. I got in a relationship with someone that stole my identity so all my bank was emptied <laughs> oh. i got canceled oh. as a teacher and then he, all of a sudden i was like on a couch of a buddy and i was so embarrassed to face my parents because you know kind of like your parents my parents are very go-getters you know and, and you know they they were kind of like opposed that i was a spiritual teacher but when they saw that i was helping others they're like you're doing a, a jesus job so they were proud of me again because i was popular so that popularity almost had to be destroyed and be whatever. So I ended up um, in a in a in a in a in an island, uh, isolated island, and I became a DJ. And I became this crazy partier, and I was listening to non-duality, and I was just debauchery. It was just extreme debauchery. That yeah. um, um, and then I would be I would have like a breakdown like every other day. Kind of like, you know, I'm like, I want to be enlightened. And people are like, what are you talking about enlightenment? 
I'm like, I had it before and I lost it because I started partying. I should stop partying. And I would go seven days again of meditation. And then it was just this cycle and everything. So when it apparently happened, I was just really DJing. And I noticed that, um, of course, I was like binging on Tony Parsons and Jim Newman and that kind of stuff, right? And um, and then one day I was just DJing. And I noticed that when I DJ, I've been DJing for 20 years, that the reason I like it is because there's no Emerson there. There's just this musicality that happens, you know what I'm saying? All of this. And, and, and if you notice, when you go to a party, the DJ gets started, no one dances. All of a sudden, there's this moment that everyone's dancing, jumping up and down, and there's wholeness that's happening. So I sat down and I was like, holy fuck, there's never been anyone here. What the fuck is this Sargadada talking about the eye? And, you know, all of that kind of stuff. And I just saw like 10, 15 years of knowledge just draining down the drain. It was just like, it was just this, it's like a black hole. And I was like, it's it was real emptiness like it collapsed it was just collapsed not even draining it was just gone and and then I ended up throwing all my books and deleting my audible account you know because everything that I know everything that I've known um is bullshit it's an illusion and it's just and that was four years ago and I didn't even start speaking until about uh December by mistake you know by by accident a speaker I just really love this community I'm a fanboy of this communication because I've never been this um happy right in in a long stretch of time you know it's kind of like even when my dog died my my aunt died there was pain and grieving but no suffering and all this while for 10 years every time that my mom was kind of like you know I would meditate and everything and try to find that silence trying to find that equanimity um or trying to find the now, Ramdas, you know, all that kind of stuff, the presence. And that's wrong <laughs> because you're just reinserting the reality of this illusion by reaffirming it, by trying to find a illusory now, an illusory state. It's all illusion. So when it's seen that it's all true and true an illusion, that there's nothing that you can do, um, that there's nothing, for example, my drinking dropped. Like I didn't need to escape anymore. Mm -hmm. um, my dealers are like, what's going on? You know what I'm saying? You're not calling us anymore. I'm like, there's not necessary anymore because there's no escape. But somehow when I'm partying, you know, when, when the wedding happens and I get invited and I had too many shots, the next day, no shame, no guilt because nothing happened. Mm -hmm. Nothing happened whatsoever. But there's a, there's a control, not 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 a control that I'm controlling it, but there's a cutoff now. It's kind of like, okay, mm -hmm. bye, see you guys later. Like after like maybe six or seven drinks, you know, when I'm about to black out because it's not escaping mm -hmm. anymore. <laughs> um, and there's just a naturalness to it. And then when I'm hungover the next day, I'm like, I'm going to take a bath. I'm going to watch a whole bunch of Netflix. It's unconditional freedom because I went through the AA, al -Anon, all that kind of stuff. And, mm -hmm. you know, because I would be sober for like seven years and then, it will be like a year of nonstop partying and trying everything under the sun kind of thing. Um, and there's just this contentment, this contentment that nothing really happened, that this is the natural of, naturalness of this character. The character actually is really kind. It's not really debaucherous. The, the narrative, the story is the seeking, the, the separation is, is, is desire. And it's just a an, an never-ending loop of desire, right? It's the desire to have more desires. And then when it got everything that it desired, it wants to lose the desire. But that's still a desire. Trying to get rid of the desire is a desire. So it's almost like I was in the movie and then I panned out a little bit and I was like, oh, it's all happening by itself. There's nothing that I can do or not do about it because it's just what is. So if it's going to be messy, it's going to be messy. So it's going to be, um, but there's just, you know, um, nothing I can do about it. There's no doer here. And all of the other teachings did not make sense anymore. Even radical non duality did not even make sense anymore because they keep on repeating the same. There's nothing happening and everything. Although this character does the same, but, it, but it, it's creative with it. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like, <laughs> it's relatable. There's this aliveness here. It's not, it's not parroting, you know, Tony. I love Tony. And I love Jim, but there's this character Emerson, it's free. So it's free to be radical and just go 
absolutely nuts with the communication. And, um, and they really call out, you know, so there's this narrator, you know, named Jonathan, which is not really real, that seems to appear, has this baggage of stories. They're all rocks, actually. Imagine it's heavy. Um, in the morning when you wake up, there's no Jonathan. And then Jonathan comes back and recreates all of this stuff. But since there's no time, how is that possible? Since there is no, um, there's this book that they have. It's just, it's a boring book. It's, it's a horrible book. But they figured out that there's no self, there's no consciousness, there's no free will, and there's no time. The, the time thing has been, has been, and this is just a story as well. Even Einstein said, reality is a very, it's, it's an illusion, albeit a very persistent one. It's already figured out that there's no time, that there's no reality, that there's nothing happening. But the narrative, the illusion, this feels absolutely real, wants to apparently experience this um, unreality, this, un this uncreation. For example, for you to feel this desperation, you must have felt bliss before. For you to be able to um, feel pain, there's a lot of pleasure that you've also experienced. To get high, you've been you've had uh, hit your rock bottoms. What's wrong with them? Nothing really. <laughs> They're just appearances. So when it's seen that there's just this apparent illusion of this happening. In a non-happening apparent reality, everything that's unfolding is just what is. You can say that it's the infiniteness, the emptiness. This is emptiness here. This is emptiness speaking to emptiness. In the impossible appearance of time that there's this happening. Um, yeah, so when this clarity is really, it's just so immediate. Um, there seems to be kind of like a it was a very, when the Emerson fell away, it was just like, boom. I did not speak for a whole month. I was like, what the fuck? Right? Because every every thought that would come in, I would just giggle. Or kind of like shake my head. Like, what the hell is that? It became, it's not about getting rid of it. It's seeing that that's really empty. That's actually emptiness. That's actually, and you know, a lot of people will talk about this, like Sailor Bob and everybody in the non-duality thing. Um, but what they seem to miss is this, that it can't be thought. It's unteachable. It's impossible to teach. Um, I can talk here nonstop and, it, and, and about this, but you will never get it because you're not even here. Everything that, every time that you think you understand, you've made it into a story. Every time that you, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, I get that. It's just resonance that this is really empty and empty. And the empty, before you even think about it, it's not it. Before you even think what nothing is, that's not it. It doesn't appear in thoughts. And it's so grand and mysterious and also humble that it appears in everything. This unknowingness, this emptiness, this divinity, whatever it is, sacredness, I don't like using those words, um, appears when you're pooping. <laughs> appears when you're snoring appears when you're deep sleeping, whatever, appears when you're angry, appears when you're debaucherous and snorting a whole bunch of shit, right? It's everything. It doesn't really matter. Meditation, masturbation, shame shit, it's not happening. And seemingly, you know what I'm saying, even when that's seen that, you know, it doesn't really matter, there's a, uh, there's an aliveness like this puppy, <laughs> right? That doesn't give a fuck. And there's, it's, and, but it doesn't fuck up things anymore. Like, you know, people think, well, when there's no me, it's a really irresponsible thing. You know, um, you're going to, you know, if there's no one here, then you're going to murder people. Actually the opposite. There's actually um, sincerity here. There's kindness. There's honesty, radical honesty. That's not going to lead you astray or give you give you a dangling carrot, um, you know, or milk you for money or anything like that. You know what I'm saying? It's, 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 it's kind of like I've been there in this story and I got out of the story and I don't know why you're still there in the story. <laughs> it is just Me this, either. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> 
and it's just it's just ridiculous it's ridiculous when you see it when you see it it's just so ridiculous that the story is so it's not about getting rid of the story even it's just seeing through that it's a story there's this famous movie by well not really famous but there's some movie by Jodorowsky it's called the holy mountain so there's this seeker you know that becomes a christ-like figure shedding golden poop and everything it's just really psychedelic film i'll ruin the ending for you there's the ending so you know all of you had like disciples so it's like this epic epic like psychedelic you know spanish you know art house movie Mm -hmm. um that was supposed to be um it, it was classic classic anyway at the end of it you know you think that you've witnessed a spiritual transformation or whatever the camera starts pulling out and shows it's a movie set (laughs) that's the summation of what happened here it was like what the fuck man and like yours too it's like i'm like what the fuck all this time i thought that i was going through a spiritual change or it's this is basically the end of spirituality spirituality is bullshit and and um and I was holding on to that because, you know what, it was my status. You know, I was a spiritual guy. I was supposed to be kind. But this character, someone actually messaged me um, from my elementary days. And this is just a story. And said to me, hey, Emerson, I don't know if you remember me. But um, basically, I was kind of like basically saying that I've changed, you know, and I'm, you know, selfless service, you know, and all of this kind of stuff. He goes, that's not true. Because when we we're in elementary, I didn't have money. You gave me lunch money all the time. Mm. Your character's been really kind all this mm-hmm. time. I'm like, really? <laughs> so without the story, without trying to be better, the character is going to be what it is. And there's nothing really wrong or right about being kind or not kind. It's just a story. So what I'm trying to say here is that there's nothing lacking in you because there's no you to lack. So life appears as automatic. Life appears with no drivers. So it's kind of like, you know what? It's like I've been driving this car and I think that I'm a horrible driver because maybe I'm blaming that I'm Asian. And then someone taps, <laughs> tap, taps you on the side and basically says, did you know that you this car is, 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 um, is a, a Tesla that drives by itself? You haven't been driving. You've, did, you've never driven anywhere. And then further seeing... That is just a Tesla car in a in a kid in a mall. You know, that's not even moving. Nothing is happening. And this wonderful ride called life is just as it is. It's just a ride. It's the infinity taking a ride in the finite. It's an infinity taking a ride in time. In timelessness appearing as time. It's the 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 undivisible appearing as division. So there's just this appreciation now for it. I'm like, what the fuck? This is, wow, right? All of that, all of that, all of that crying and seeking and everything. It's just, it's just this wholeness, this aliveness. And there's nothing wrong or right about any, any of it. And when it's seen that life is just perfectly appearing as it is, that there's nothing outside of this, that everything is an illusion, then there is a, a dropping away of these belief systems because really all that you are is a belief. <laughs> there's right. a belief that you were born. There's a belief that you were, you're um, human. There's a belief that you are flesh and blood. All of them are labels and belief. You label your belief systems. It's a belief in separation. So if you go to the nitty gritty all the way to the thing, it's just the, the, um, the indivisible believing, having a nightmare of separation. Like a nighttime dream, everything that feels absolutely real, the moment that you wake up, nothing happened at all. Like this. This is not happening. (laughs) Everything that you think about is an illusion, but it's also emptiness in disguise as an illusion. So it's emptiness, divinity, the beloved, whatever you might want to call it, is playing by itself. And you're not even here. This is all divinity or this is all emptiness appearing as whatever. Appearing as illusions of a Jonathan or an Emerson. 
The problem with the I am is because the the uh, the uh, enlightened ego becomes like the I am. Like I did that for like years, and it got me into so much trouble. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> because here I am thinking that I have some something to offer. So when this is all the same, when this is all equality, there's no difference between you and I. We're all illusion. There's no hierarchy. There's no better illusion or worse illusion. So I don't try to change anything because there's no one to change. I, I, I just love talking about this, um, about this obviousness, because it's really obvious that there's no one here. But the moment that you think that there is this, you know, wow, that's a belief, then it, it runs again. So there's nothing wrong about that. It's just a GPS in the experience of separation. It's like your tour guide in the dream of separation. The voice, the chatter, the, you know, the awareness, the consciousness is just all, it's like a Siri. <laughs> and it's, it is just bullshit trying to get into a state because that's just another illusion. That's duality. Meditation is just another illusion. That's duality. Nothing wrong or right about that. It's the same thing as getting a massage or going to the rub and tug. It's the same thing. It's just and, and yet, uh, is it okay if I if I I'm loving yeah, yeah, listening to you, but yeah, yeah. But like what I what I see, and I know this. I'll just say it. So there's still this sense of like. That I am here? What's wrong with that? That's your, that's, that's it too. As I said, that's emptiness guiding you through the separation. It's like this sense of realness. Otherwise, I would not be able to hold the cup if there's no sense well, of separation. And, and, and then, and more kind of story bound, there's still this fear of, um, not wanting to drink or not wanting to go back to that person well, it's not who good to thought, who thought uh yeah well you, you know because what I had, like so there's there's still this duality in in the whole yeah. because and i in the and dream, I, in the dream and, if and i don't want to hurt to... people and you know oh yeah 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 here you, you know. know what i'm saying i i talked to someone that has fallen away that goes to aa just doesn't listen to the higher power shit but it's 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 a dream Right, still goes to Paul Hederman. Um, you know, goes to Paul Hederman and cheats with me. You know, what I'm saying because he's <laughs> <laughs> goes to Paul Hederman, and Paul Hederman is great. You know, he's a good guy, and he's, he's speaking from his apparent experience. Right, I don't want to even promote this. You know, what I'm saying because people might think that they have to stop going through their process of AA or whatever. In the dream, whatever helps you in the dream. If if sobriety helps you and not helping others, then there'll be more clarity about that then they'll be like, you know what? I'm not choosing to do this anymore. But if you somehow fall apart one day, there's instant forgiveness. If you relapse, there's no shame and everything. And it just has to go back into the AA again. It's brilliant. Yeah, you know there's, there's just, it's just everything. It's just everything and nothing. It's just, it doesn't yeah. matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter for for here. Like for example, um, I don't go drinking anymore. I, I I'm a you know um, um, after like three or four, maybe six or seven max. You know what I'm saying? The the apparent character just say, okay, I gotta go now. See you guys later. That kind of thing. And then if, if it's hungover the next day, it doesn't have any regrets. But it doesn't. Maybe in the past um year, maybe three times. Right, and I don't crave it anymore, right? Because I'm not right. escaping anything anymore, um, and that's just the dream. How it's showing up there, yeah. And how it shows up here is different for for whatever reason. Yeah. It could be this character doesn't doesn't experience what that character is doing. Because, no, no, no. Well, for whatever or yeah. Although like, there's no other dreamer, there's no other, there's no eight point bill, five billion people. You're you're basically what I'm expressing here that there's only you, and you're not even real. I'm not here. You're seeing a complete illusion. You're not even here. Everything that you're seeing is is an illusion, but it's also emptiness. 
So you're talking to emptiness right now. Um, but it's admittedly, there's no one, there's no Emerson here. So in the apparent illusion of 8.5, to maintain the reality that this is separation, the 8.5 billion people are going to be completely different from each other. Like how many, like snowflakes, for example, there, there's no two snowflakes that's the same. There's also no two trees that are the same. So how could your apparent awakening be the same as mine when I'm not even here? And in, in the dream where two, you know, it's not the same. So what I'm expressing right now that it's already done. It might be slow motion. I always talk about the end game and the beginning, which is the same. So it's already done because in your apparent deathbed, everything that I'm going to be saying here is already realized that there's nothing to do. There's nothing to figure out that there's no such thing as enlightenment, the fantasy version of it. There's no such thing. But what there is, though, is this infinity already appearing as it is. This is already heaven. You're already dead. The belief in the character is dead already. That's why you're, you're brave enough to talk to me. Some people get drunk before they talk to me. Some people, mm -hmm. you know, are petrified of this communication because this is just a story. There's no one better or worse, but somehow they think that I take it further. Like it goes, you know, really extreme. And it's just, it's, it's this, it's, this is like a deep programming that, that you've been looking for. <laughs> yeah. I, I have tears coming up. And I feel like I'm talking to myself. It yeah. is, is actually what feels like it's happening yeah. on some level. I mean, I almost it feel is. like you're part of like, it's like you're myself. In some way. Yeah. <laughs> and we're not even know. here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like a, it's like, a wake up call that you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be one of those people that start laughing on camera. Oh, I got it. But oh, yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. 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 There's nothing special here. It's just, this is just what is. Where there's nothing special and and everything is just as it is. This is kind of like the un unraveling, unfolding, that when it's seen that there's no one special, then all of the hierarchies of people that you believed crumbles down, tumbles down. It becomes whole. It becomes one. It's not divided anymore. There's no superior. There's no inferior. It's just talking to itself. Basically saying, hey, dude, there's nowhere to go. You know, this is it. This is, this is the paradise that you've been looking for. But you keep on neglecting it because you believe that there's a you that needs to get there. This is already death. But you were never born at the same time. This is just the eternal, speaking to the eternal, that this is eternity. And this blip, this tiny idea of time, is enjoy it. <laughs> this mad idea of separation. Appreciate it, <laughs> apparently. It's is what it is. It's beautiful when it's seen as completeness already. There's nothing to figure out. There's nothing to know. There's no lessons that needs to be learned, right? Because what may appear as brokenness is actually eternity appearing as whatever. And it's it when the blinders are off, when there's a deep programming. The character is free to be what it is. It's not really broken. You know what I'm saying? I, brokenness is just another idea. It's just what it is. And, and from here in this apparent character, this expression anyway, the character is kinder. It's honest. You know what I'm saying? And it, it's fun loving and, and not a doormat anymore. I used to be a doormat. <laughs> and they used to have this idea that I was a messiah or something, a messiah's complex or a messenger. So all what I mean by all the specialness when it's taken rubbed taken off, you see specialness in everything, not you anymore, because it's really arrogant to think that you're the only special one. And that's the seeking is I want to be special, I want to be this, I want to be that. 
when when it's when it's looking at itself when it looks at itself all the time you're looking at at, at itself this is the itness or the isness that is always here it can never leave it has never left because it's not in time <laughs> it's infinite so it's not possible so when somebody says that it's always been this way It's, it's almost like this is the unlearning. Everything that you've learned is an illusion. It's a distraction. It's an obstacle. But that, there's nothing wrong or right about that, right? It's just, it's just what is. It makes this apparent appearance richer <laughs> because you've gone through all the bullshit. <laughs> it's so hilarious, you know what I'm saying? That... Um, it's so simple that no one has it. No one has the truth. Because truth is another concept. It's just another idea. So when someone says that they have the truth, it's just another merry-go-round. It's just another ride. <laughs> but when the camera pans out, um, there's no more um, neurosis in doing any of that. You're not missing out on anything because nothing is missed. Life is just appearing. It's like a flow of this river, river of emptiness. And it's just nice. It's not this fantasy anymore, right? It's because we used to have this fantasy of how would it be like to, <laughs> to finally, you know, whatever, when it's always this way. But our ideas of how to get there and, you know, I'm not quite here yet, obscures it. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what to say. I mean, I'm just yeah. I, just, I feel like you're like I just feel like you're you're me, like you're like you. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. There's cute, no one like here. There's no me, in, but there's no more separation. Yeah, there's just wholeness, right? It's just wholeness. It's like you're giving me the answers. Um, like you're me giving me the answer <laughs> but like you're just like you're the you're like my brother like my friend who's just yeah. but like in in the dream but like you're me if yeah that yeah makes sense like you're you're like telling me the secret like the answers to the test <laughs> like you're secretly whispering the answers to the test or something <laughs> like you're just like, oh i got the cheat <laughs> Oh God, but it's, but it's not that it's so, it's just, it's like, well, home, you know, it's like a rest. Yeah. It's relief, right? All of this, all of this yeah, baggage relief. that you're carrying um, are heavy. Um, all of that yeah. seeking, all yeah. of that history oh. didn't really even the happen. The good and the bad, the good and the bad. It's and the heavy, ugly. You know, <laughs> and the ugly. Yeah. And the pretty, you know, it's all, it's yeah. all it's gotta be pretty. You know, I just bought this fucking like car it's like it's i mean it was it was what would happen it is as it is but it's like it yeah, is it's, yeah it is what it is you know and, and who cares who cares yeah yeah, yeah. and yeah. i'm having fun there's part of me that has fun with it too. yeah <laughs> why not why but, not yeah <laughs> when when i was trying to seek for this enlightenment there were so many rules but yeah but i started uh, you know what someone just actually um uh, said to me that um, goes, and this is just a story. There's nothing special here. Someone basically said that, dude, you're like you're like a crazy wisdom monk. You know, the monk that parties and everything, and has clarity. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I don't really party that much anymore. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's yeah. just contentment. It's like I'm in the middle thing now, right? If partying happens, if somebody hands me a doobie, oh, I'll yeah. smoke it. Hell yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Oh, if I, if yeah. I. You know, I'm not that. I'm not. That's not me. But like, yeah, that's who I wanted to be. You know, I wanted yeah, to be yeah. the crazy wisdom monk. But for whatever reason, it's like, 
well, you know, maybe, maybe that, you know, it does, it doesn't matter. It's okay. It doesn't it's matter. All... It doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't yeah, yeah, matter. Yeah, 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 yeah. It yeah. doesn't, it, that's all the story again, right? It's all the story. Right. The story, apparently they will unfold, right? When it's seen as a story, you'll be surprised of how stunning it is. It might be that you never touch a single drop or any substances and there's just contentment with that. Or it could be that once in a while there's accidents happen and there's also contentment with that. So what's mm. being spoken about here is contentment. It's the unconditional contentment of what is. Even if you fuck up, so what? <laughs> yeah, it's not bound to a story. The no, no, no. Or, or no. to an appearance. Yeah. Like I used yeah. to feel so guilty about buying stuff because I'm like, oh, I'm going into the material stuff again. Uh, everything. Mm. There's just this, and now I enjoy it. Because mm. that was the extreme before. I would avoid it. I buy these right. glasses from Alibaba. They're like two bucks and they're cool. What's wrong with that? You know what I'm saying? There's nothing wrong with that. Like yeah. The rules, it just appears as whatever. Or if, even if this was, if I bought it at Gucci, but I can't afford Gucci right now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if you can, cool. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, there's just contentment here. It doesn't have to be popular. It doesn't have to be whatever. I don't, I don't look at my numbers of subscribers. There's just contentment. I enjoy doing this. Um, yeah. I enjoy my puppy. Um, and then my, once in a while, my, my nieces and nephew come over. Contentment of what is. In, in, in a textbook, kind of like success, this character has failed completely. He was a successful business person. It gave away for spirituality. It became a successful spirituality. Fucked it up majorly, although no one did that. And then um, exiled to become a small town DJ dude. And then when, when my parents asked me if I could um, help my mom, I said, yes. So here I'm a 50 year old living at home, helping my mom with a puppy doing this non-duality stuff. And it's perfect. perfect. Yeah. I have to go because I have another one in one, yeah. but you know what? I have, um, I have some videos. Of, I did a five days called extreme exhaustion. And I think half of the people fell away from that. There were like about 50 participants. If you like, I can send you the recordings. You can Please, donate or not. Yeah. You don't have to. I, yeah. But I'll send, and you, I've send been, it to I've you. been listening on you. Is it, it's not on YouTube. No, no, no. This is okay. This is, yeah. this is the one that basically people are begging me not to release it because it's so radical. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You'll yeah, hear yeah, it. Please it's, do. It's, it's, Okay. They're like, they'll crucify you, Emerson, if, if this gets out. <laughs> so don't oh, share. Oh, yeah, you were... I think I heard you saying about uh, oh, what Five did you days. say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I think in your that there's no soul. Did you no, talk that's about not, that? That's that not even no that. Soul? Oh, that's a different one. Okay, it goes okay. further. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, good. No, I'm down. I'm down. I I'll I, see you. I, at... Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Love thank you, you thank you, Emerson. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We'll talk again soon. Bye. -bye. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs>